Film, TV, and books have taught us that anyone bitten by a werewolf will become one during the next full moon, or that lycanthropy is transmittable via a curse. In the world of darkness, werewolves are born, not made. Hello, 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 and welcome to my new lore video on Werewolf the Apocalypse. In the last video, we talked about the mythic history of the Garu, and in this video, we'll talk about what it means and what it's like to become Garu. Garu do not normally know of their heritage until puberty hits, at which point the first change comes upon them. When this happens depends upon the breed of the werewolf, namely what their natural form is, but it always comes as a terrible and traumatic shock. No werewolf that produces children can know for certain if the resulting children or cubs will be Garu. Rather, there is approximately a 1 in 10 chance that a werewolf's progeny will undergo the change. Two werewolves can also produce children, who will always be Garu, but before we get into the different breeds of werewolves, let's briefly talk about those humans and wolves who are related to the Garu, but who are not actual shapeshifters themselves. Human kinfolk generally have a bit more spirituality and connection to nature, being slightly of the wolf, while animal kinfolk have more cognizance than their animal brethren, since they have a bit of human in them. Some tribes look at their human kinfolk as revered children, since they might change at any time, looking after them and keeping them safe from supernatural enemies. Other tribes view their human kinfolk as breeding stock. We'll discuss these tribes and their traditional relationships to their kinfolk in future videos. Wolf kinfolk, however, are especially prized since the wolf population is consistently dwindling. Wolf packs, including kinfolk, usually have a powerful spirit or even a Garu protector. Now let's discuss those who do go through the change and become Garu. Breed is a term used to describe the form in which a shapeshifter was born, and a werewolf's breed shapes their nature long before that first change. If one of the parents is human, they will grow up in human society, learning the ways of man. If one of the parents is a wolf, they will be raised by wolves, and human society will be a mystery to them. In almost every case, one of the parents is Garu. Whether the child's mother's natural form is that of a human or a wolf determines what the progeny's breed will be. It's also possible that a werewolf might be born to two human parents or a mated pair of wolves but only if the werewolf blood is strong enough in the family. There are three such breeds in Garu society, Hamid, Lupus, and Metis. Hamid are the breed of the Garu who were born as and raised by humans, their natural form. Hamids do not make their first change until puberty or shortly thereafter. Prior to their change, many Hamids suffer from dreams and visions of dealing with wolves and the wilderness, and experience behavioral problems or have sensory quirks that make them seem strange. Some have difficulty assimilating in human society, but in general, Hamids thrive in the human world, even as Garu, and tend to falter when dealing with nature. Lupus are the breed of Garu who were born as and raised as a wolf, which is their natural form. A lupus werewolf is the child of a wolf and a werewolf, or more rarely, two kinfolk wolves. It's rare, though not unheard of, for multiple wolves in a litter to be lupus. Every lupus werewolf is considered a blessing due to the increasing rarity of wolf packs. Lupus, like Homids, understand from early on that they are different. Pre-change lupus tend to be more intelligent than their packmates due to their human side. Once a lupus goes through that first change, they develop the capacity for abstract thought and symbolic language, which is either a tremendous relief or a terrifying bombardment of ideas and information. A lupus must go from the relatively simple concerns of being a wolf to the much more nuanced social considerations of being Garu, which includes much to a lupus's chagrin dealing with humans. Many lupus bear a strong grudge towards humans for their tamperings, and this frequently extends to Hamid Garu. Language is also a huge barrier for lupus, having to learn random assortments of sounds and then apply meaning to it. But as much as the Hamid struggles with nature, lupus are born with a keen understanding of the natural world. Lupus are also intensely aware that they are a dying breed. Metis is a term used to describe a rare breed of Garu, the offspring of two Garu who broke the litany for love or lust. Metis are born in the Krinos form, also known as the werewolf's war form, and that is their natural form. However, Metis are always born sterile and deformed in some way. 
The litany is the code of laws kept by the Garu, and lays out tenets all Garu are expected to follow. The first of them being, Garu shall not mate with Garu. For more context on this, you can watch my last video on Werewolf the Apocalypse where we talked about the Impergium. Most Metis grow up bitter, being seen as unworthy abominations in the eyes of Gaia, and while some might learn to blend in, they never really have a place to belong. If a human sees a Metis in its natural form, or any werewolf in Krynos form, they are struck with overwhelming fear and madness. The human might panic and run, faint, become catatonic, or, in rare instances, blindly attack the werewolf. Garu call this phenomenon the delirium. For thousands of years, Garu preyed on humans, and even though most humans have no idea that werewolves exist, some part of the collective unconscious remembers the millennia of terror. Kinfolk, on the other hand, are unaffected by the delirium. They possess Garu blood, so they see their relations as they really are. The delirium may be seen as a sort of supernatural blessing, since the humans rationalize such sightings away instinctively, concocting elaborate and horrific stories about what they thought they saw. Therefore, most humans refuse to accept that werewolves are real, even when confronted with very direct evidence. Despite the protection this fear affords, the Garu cannot take chances, and werewolves who unleash the panic of the delirium without good cause are punished severely or even exiled. The Garu's survival depends on staying hidden and acting discreetly, and indiscretion has its consequences. If even one human in a thousand believes what they saw, that's far too many. This occasionally results in bloody purges of people who have seen too much, although some tribes refuse to allow innocent people to die for Garu carelessness. So now that we've discussed the breeds of the Garu, what is that first change really like? The first change usually occurs between the ages of 10 to 16 for humans and approximately two years of age for wolves. Whenever it happens, they shapeshift for the first time, usually in response to a threat or some other intense stimulus. Changing into the dreadful Krynos form, the werewolf takes out a lifetime of frustration and rage at whatever is in their immediate area, if they are lucky. A werewolf or a pack is nearby and can subdue them before they wreak too much havoc. If they are unlucky, they change alone and must find their own way to calm down before descending into total madness. Some werewolves, though, feel that the destruction and carnage of the first change is exactly what young Garu need in order to understand their new lives. Once the change has occurred and the new werewolf has either been found or stumbled upon a pack on their own, they are taken to a sept where they are prepared for the rite of passage. The new werewolf learns the litany, how to control the change, and about the tribes so that they may choose one to join, among other things. In some cases, membership in a given tribe is expected. The new werewolf might be purebred into one tribe or another, and several tribes are meticulous about maintaining their lineages. In these cases, membership in a tribe isn't really optional. Every tribe has its own traditions for the rite of passage, a deadly and dangerous quest that tests a werewolf's strength and wisdom to its very limits. The rite is more than a transition into adulthood. It also shows elders that they are worthy of membership in one of the tribes. Until this quest is complete, they do not belong to any of them. Not until they have proven themselves. Breeds are not the only aspects that define a werewolf. As I said before, a werewolf's nature is shaped long before that first change. Auspice is the term for the phase of the moon under which a Garu was born, and just as their breed will shape their view of the world, a werewolf's auspice will shape their role in the war against the worm. A Garu is strongest when the moon's phase corresponds to their auspice, filling them with an exhilarating rush of energy and increasing their tendency towards rage. Garu born on the new moon, also known as Ragabash, are destined to be masters of stealth, trickery, and guile. They are the fools who are alternately irrational and wise, playing the role of the contrary and questioning tradition in order to find the wisest path. Such werewolves are granted latitude to break, or at least bend, the rules of Garu's society, which we will talk about more in a future video. The Ragabash are also the auspice with the least amount of rage. Garu born under the light of the crescent moon are called Theurge, and are granted the gift of insight. The Theurges are the mystics of the Garu, closer than any to the Umbra. 
Garu born under this moon are ritualists, spirit masters, shamans, and mystics. All werewolves can commune with spirits, but Theurges are born to it, and act as emissaries to powerful umbral beings, undertake quests into the spirit world, and perform divinations for their packs. Only the Ragabash start with less rage than the Theurges do. Werewolves born under the Half Moon are called Philodox, and are judges and mediators in Garu society. They usually are the leaders in times of peace. The Half Moon means balance and duality. Therefore, such Garu have to be able to make wise decisions on behalf of their kind. Philodox are expected to levy punishment on other werewolves when necessary, as well as judging whether a being is irredeemably worm-tainted. The Philodox is the middle auspice and the most moderate in terms of rage. Garu born under the Gibbous Moon are the so-called bards and keepers of ancient lore, who know of all the ancient legends and songs and are called Galliard. The Galliard are the voice and soul of the Garu, calling them to battle and inspiring them to greatness in life and in death. They are also the keepers of traditions, carrying the lore of tribes all the way back to the beginning. Their songs can soothe the pack after a loss or whip it into a battle-ready frenzy. The Galliard possess the second highest starting level of rage. Garu born under the full moon are the most fierce warriors, the deadliest and most vicious of their kind, so it comes as no surprise that they begin their lives with the highest amount of rage. The Arun, as they are called, are warriors among a race of warriors, champions of a martial people, ever ready to kill and to die if need be. In the next Werewolf the Apocalypse lore video, we'll talk about the cosmology of the Garu. Now ask yourselves this, Garu. When will you rage?